Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. I'd also like to give a shout out to Coin Bureau. He actually recently put out a video where he talked about uh, some of his favorite YouTube channels. And I, I wanted to mention that he is also, I, I really do like his channel. We've, I've, I've followed him for, for years. He puts out a lot of great information on not just Bitcoin, but the entire asset class. He does a lot of fundamental analysis. We do a little bit of that here, but we don't touch on it nearly as much as he does. So if you haven't watched his stuff, I would encourage you to go check it out. Coin Bureau, we'll have a link to his, his content, his channel in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this, as you'll probably recognize, is the chart for Bitcoin. And what we'll notice as well is that it appears to go through various boom and bust cycles. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people are sucked into the cryptoverse near major tops. Okay, not always market cycle tops, but major tops nonetheless. Well, why are they sucked into the cryptoverse at that point? Well, that's normally the phase of the cycle where it's all over the news and their friends are encouraging them to go buy whatever meme coin is, is trending that weekend. But fortunately, while it's not always the best way to get into the cryptoverse, fortunately, the people that tend to stick around can ultimately do quite well. So I would like to say that if you entered the cryptoverse in April or May and you're wondering what's going on, I would argue that if you just stick around for a few years, you will see how the market works. If you only come for just a few days and then leave, then unfortunately, it will you, you will not be able to to say realize the same types of um, uh, gains and whatnot that those who stick around for the long haul can realize. So what I want to do to help educate people on how the market works is at least what I noticed several years ago. But again, there's these boom and bust cycles to the market. And I said, well, what if we only took what we might deem to be non-bubble data? What does that mean, right? Well, the idea, generally speaking, is what if you fit this to a function that did not include these major peaks and instead just included the data points where it was more or less the accumulation range before the parabolic move. When I did that, I got something that looked like this, okay? These red data points. And you might look at this and say, well, Ben, why does it stop here? Because we all know that we continue to have accumulation into 2019 and 2020. That's true, we did. But I did this fit a couple years ago. And if I'm going to refit it uh, every single day, then I would say it becomes a little bit useless okay we don't want to just refit something every single day the whole point is to fit it at the bottom of the market cycle the bottom around the bottom a few days around the bottom and then watch it and see if it ultimately can't can stand the test of time unfortunately there's a lot of predictions out there that don't stand the test of time and the argument with this one is hey guys maybe this one will stand the test of time but in order to see that it see if it does we need time and what I did was I fit this to a logarithmic regression curve that looks something like this. And you might say, well, what, what function is this? Again, it's just this function, y equals 10 raised to the power a times the ln of x minus b, where x is the number of days, and a and b are fitted coefficients to the quote-unquote non-bubble data. And when you look at this, what you'll notice is the halvings, which are the dashed lines, which occur approximately every four years, not quite, right? Not quite. If, if we really unpack that for a moment before just moving on, um, this one occurred at the very end of 2012. And then the next one occurred in July of 2016. And then the following occurred in May of 2020. So, so far, they've been getting earlier and earlier in the year. So it's not exactly four years. Um, but it is approximately four years. It's actually based on, on the number of blocks, not a specific amount of time. So what you may notice though, for the astute observers, is that 
at the time of the having, at the time of the having, the price of Bitcoin tends to be around the fair value. Okay, and I'm I'm calling the fair value the fit to non-bubble data. Now, you might not like that terminology and that can be understandable because you might look at this and say, well, how can that be the fair value? It's sort of the lower bound. You could also think of it as the lower bound, right? The accumulation range, right? The main accumulation range. That's not to say you can't accumulate above the, the main accumulation range. Anyone who accumulated in 2013 through this peak and still accumulated over here would have still made money. Even if you accumulated up here going into 2016 and 2017, you still would have made money as long as you got out before the top. So there's plenty of times you can accumulate even when we're no longer in the best accumulation phase of the cycle. Um, but the, the blue line represents historically the best accumulation phase. And what it also shows is that at the time of the halving, the price of Bitcoin tends to be around the fair value. That doesn't mean it will always be around the fair value for future halvings. It just means that that's what historically has happened, okay? So if we provide a little bit of tolerance to this fit or uncertainty, we get something that looks like this, okay? And what you'll notice is despite the fact that I only fit it to data through here, we popped above it in 2019, we came back down, hit the fair value, back up to the top, down to the bottom, back up on the fair value, and then boom, we moved up. So, so far, we could argue that it has at least held, um, it, it has at least stood the test of time. Back when we were over here, I didn't know if it would. I thought it would, and I said, hey guys, I think we're gonna look back at this in one to two years and say, wow, we should have bought more Bitcoin. And honestly, who doesn't look at that and say that we should have bought more Bitcoin? But the, th the point is, is when we were over here, there was certainly a possibility, like in March of 2020, it seemed like we might actually go below it and, and go on some new trend, but we didn't, right? We didn't and we continued up, we came back up, back to the fair value and then up, okay, back up. And going back to the point of the halving, you might say, well, what does that mean for the next halving? What could that mean? Well, what would the fair value be at the next halving? Well, it'd probably be around 50k. All right. So my speculation is that by the time of the next having the price of Bitcoin will probably be around 50k plus or minus 10k or so. So maybe 40k, maybe up to 60k. Therefore, even people who accumulate at say 50k, which is a little I mean, it's, it's close to the valuation of Bitcoin today, it's a little bit higher than the valuation of Bitcoin today, I think Bitcoin right now is at around 48k. Even those accumulating today, you could argue that by the time of the next halving, there's a decent chance that it's either around the price um, or maybe even above it, right? It could still be above it. Now, what could happen between now and then though, right? I mean, like we're certainly not gonna go sideways for a number of years. Uh, we're not just gonna go sideways for the next three years uh, into the halving. I would argue that we could trend much higher and then have a move back down um, in, in, a, in a future bear market. And, and that's the way I currently see the market. I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the market cycle is not over, that time is in fact on our side. Now, if you think about the next halving, we still have all of 2022 and 2023 before we would maybe be around that, that 50K mark or so sometime out in 2024 for the next halving. But a lot could happen between now and then. I mean, we could go to 100K, we could go to 150K, we could go to 200K. Imagine a scenario where we where we play in the sandbox down here for a little bit longer, and, and then we maybe make a move up to 200K, and then we have a, a bear market that takes us back. Maybe the next halving, we will not be at the fair value. We should also remember that this should probably be refit every market cycle, okay? now. You might say, well, does that go against what you said earlier of not refitting it? I don't think it does. I don't think we need to refit it every day, but I think once per cycle is probably somewhat important. The reason I say that is because if you only fit it to this data over here, you would have gotten a logarithmic regression curve that went up something like that. If you only fit it to this data and this data here, it would have been a lot steeper. But by continuing to refit it after every cycle, it sort of converges and converges 
closer to whatever it's going to be. For instance, the fair value fit of the data through this point doesn't really change that much when you add over add the points over here. Okay, so I, I do believe it is it is slowly converging, um, but we probably will need a little bit more time to to prove that. So again, by the next having, my guess is around 50k plus or minus uh, a 10k. Okay, so it's possible that the next having. Uh, the fair value or the price of Bitcoin could be around the prior local top of 64K. Maybe that, if you take this point, this sort of uh, um, rounded top here, and we just think forward a number of years, maybe that is ultimately going to act as support several years from now. So the argument, if, if you're new to the market, is to say, well, you know, are you accumulating Bitcoin at the best time for the cycle right now? You're not, but it's still reasonable. I, I, I still would contend that a, a 50K Bitcoin in the grand scheme of say a multi-year time frame, is still incredibly reasonable and that there's a high probability that we will trend to much higher prices before that were to take place in a number of years, okay? Because remember, when you're in a multi, when you're in like a, a year bear market or something, um, it's hard to imagine going down to those prices. So imagine, um, like imagine we're at 150k or 160 or 140. At that time, it would probably be hard for people to imagine it it having a correction back below 100k. But if history is an indication, we know that's incredibly impo uh, incredibly possible. And we only we already proved that, right? We went from 64K down to 29K, which was a 55% correction. So imagine if we went to 128K, then a 50% correction from there would just be 64K, which was the prior local top. So we know that stuff's possible. And ultimately, I think it's, it's interesting to figure out what's going to happen from here until the next halving. You know, if you look at, say, the last two cycles, this peak occurred closer like if we if we sort of look at this dash line right here the having it it occurred about i mean one of these major um these major tick marks okay like it occurred a little over maybe actually about a, around a year okay because this one happened right before this um this line here and then this one occurred right before uh 2014 so having right before at the end of 2012 peak at the end of 2013 about a year after the first having if you go look at this one after the second halving, the peak occurred about a year and a half after the halving. So the speculation is, well, what if this peak, instead of occurring you know, just a year after the halving, which is what the first one did back over here, what if it occurred two years after the halving? What if instead of having a market cycle peak of 64K in 2021, what if the market cycle peak is one to 200K in 2022 or something okay and, and maybe it, it gets further and further out from the having okay so this is obviously partially where lengthening cycles come from it's very dubious because we don't have a ton of data it's possible that you know it's certainly possible the 64k was the market cycle peak i don't personally think that it is the market cycle peak um i mean i could be wrong i've been wrong about things in my life believe it or not um, but I, I would contend that there is a lot of evidence to suggest that the market cycle peak is not in, that we should be able to hit six figures within the next one to two years, that our market cycle peak is very likely going to be between one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, and that there's a good chance that by the next halving we could again be close to the fair value and hopefully creating a new launch pad to then go to several hundred thousand dollars and maybe even half a million. But again, that's a number of years away, okay? That's a number of years away from now in order for us to be looking at, at those numbers. I hope this is useful, right? I hope this is useful. Now, to cap it off, I think it's also interesting to look at a log-log curve. What is a log-log curve? Well, everyone understands, most people I think understand what a, a logarithmic scale is, right? Where you are going up 10x on, on, the, on the chart, on the y-axis, 10x from one major tick mark to the other. On the, on the x-axis, we're also using a logarithmic scale because I've, I've denominated it in number of days and then we're, we're, we're putting that on a log scale and then I, I put in, I overlaid the, the years that that would correspond to. 
And you can see that as time goes on, while we do ultimately trend back to that green line, we do always seem to keep getting these moves off of that green line where we go to these crazy market cycle peaks and then ultimately we trend back down for a little bit. I really like this chart. I'm excited to see where we ultimately go, how high we can ultimately fly, the, the opportunity that one day going back to the green line would represent and, and the accumulation phase that will occur at that time in preparation for another move to much higher values. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We do again have the sale on the premium list that's ending in just a few days. So if you guys wanna lock in the lower rate, check that out. You can find a link to that in the description below. You'll get access to weekly reports and videos, the Telegram Alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the Risk Dashboard, the Into the Cryptoverse app, and more. Make sure you check it out. You can keep that price as long as you do not cancel. Again, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, click the bell icon to turn on your notifications. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.